Compared to Audi's first generation of electric motors, the rear drive unit using the Q6 e-tron has 62% more power density and it's 50% more energy efficient. I mean, could you have ever said that about an internal combustion engine in the history of mankind? Well, the answer is actually no. The PPE's battery pack is a new chemistry for Audi, meaning, yeah, this new EV from Audi is much better than previous models based well, if you only looked at one thing, the batteries, it's significantly better. And interestingly, the batteries have been designed and manufactured by Chinese conglomerate CATL. Now, Audi is saying it's a joint venture partnership between Audi and CATL, but I'd say Audi had precisely nothing to do with that joint venture. Bigger battery cells mean this Audi can pack more material into that cell, boosting energy density and individual cells are stacked into modules, say Audi, allowing for different battery capacities. For example, there's an 83 kilowatt hour Q6 that will be sold outside the United States. That's the same pack as the 100 kilowatt hour version, just with two modules. Audi says the new simple battery layout allows it to assemble batteries faster and with more automation than ever before. It's what Tesla have been saying about cylindrical battery cells as well. To put things into perspective, the Q8 e-tron's battery pack has 36 modules and 432 cells. However, the Q6's battery, which is a similar size, has 12 modules and only 180 cells, meaning it's far less likely to have an issue with only 180 cells versus 432. This is one of the big advantages of Tesla-like 4680 cylindrical battery cells. Audi have just revealed the new Q6 e-tron electric car. Is it actually any good? Is it something you should consider? Well, I don't know, because to be honest, um, I'm about to go in for surgery tomorrow to fix three broken bones in my foot and to put an artificial ligament in there. So I've gone with the floppy hair look because I'm, um, I don't know, kind of feeling like, hey, anything can happen. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Great to see you. Now, if you're curious, I've got a Liz Frank injury. Uh, Liz Frank, and I've got three fractures, so three breaks, and um, a ligament's been torn, though. Anyway, so I'm going to get an artificial ligament, um, a few titanium plates inserted into my foot, and a bunch of titanium screws, and I'm told that they stay there for life. Apparently, I've got the worst injury you can possibly do to your foot without chopping the thing off. Um, yeah. Anyway, I've had this for a few weeks. Yeah, surgery is tomorrow. So moving on, guys, to what you're really here for, which is the, the 2025 Audi Q6 e-tron, Audi's high-tech electric car flagship. It's not cheap, but it is pretty good. And it's got a big battery pack. It's got a 100 kilowatt hour battery pack. To be honest, it's basically the same car as the Porsche Macan. But I think maybe a bit better. For one, it's bigger. It's got more interior space than the Porsche Macan. And yeah, that big battery pack is gonna give this vehicle quite a lot of range. Both Porsche and Audi have been working on the, well, their electric cars. And this is basically a sister car to the Porsche Macan. Now the e-tron aims to be, well, it wants to appeal to Americans. To be honest, this car was designed to appeal more to Americans than anyone else. Even though this is a global car, apparently Audi admit that um, yeah, they're going after American buyers more than anyone else. But to me, what matters more than anything else is the specs, the range, the performance. Is it actually any good? Actually, I think it is pretty good. Uh, Audi's EVs in the last few years have been pretty mediocre for the price. Uh, range has been nowhere near good enough for what you're paying for. But that's, well, that's changing now. The new Audi Q6 Quattro and the SQ6 both have dual motors. So one motor in the front, one motor in the rear. They're both all wheel drive, um, 456 horsepower. They'll do zero to 60 miles an hour in five seconds. So not exactly rocket-like fast for an electric car, but the SQ6 does have a bit more power. It has 510 horsepower. And it can do zero to 60 miles an hour, so zero to 96 in 4.2 seconds. Now, interestingly, it's got a different motor to the Porsche Macan. I don't know why they went and did this, but the Q6 e-tron has a, an asynchronous motor in the front and a permanent magnet motor in the rear. They say that that allows Audi to disengage the front motor to reduce energy costs. 
That's probably a smart idea. I mean, really, you don't need the front motor um, for most situations. If you're not driving in the snow, you're not driving in the wet, there's really no reason to want to have that front motor working. Uh, you might as well save, well, save energy, right? Save money. The 100 kilowatt hour battery pack is obviously sitting flat in the floor and it provides over 300 miles of range. In fact, WLTP range is 625 kilometers. So that's closer to 350 miles of range. That's pretty good. I mean, really, there's really no reason to want to get the petrol powered or the gasoline powered version of this car. And we've seen with Porsche, they've said the same. People are saying now the Porsche Macan, which is obviously, like I said, basically the same car as this, has had insane demand. Porsche said there's more demand than they can possibly handle for the new electric Macan. Uh, they're saying they've had well over 50,000 orders, probably reaching 100,000 orders by now. Porsche have never had that for any car in their history. They make a decent, compelling electric SUV. What happens? Orders are, well, order books are just, their orders are going crazy. Now, it's worth noting that the new all-electric Porsche Macan has had a, well, a significant increase in price. It's $20,000 more expensive than the gasoline or the petrol-powered Porsche Macan. Porsche is saying it's worth the money. And from what I can see, they're right. There will be a real wheel drive version of the Audi Q6 e-tron, which will have more range because it's gonna have the same battery pack. It's gonna have the same 100 kilowatt battery. One motor means it'll be lighter, um, pushing less power through the car will give it more range. Probably smaller wheels, that'll give it more range as well. So if you're wanting a, a longer range version, a cheaper version, yeah, that will be a definite option. Now the Q6 charging speed is good. This has been a bit of a problem, in my opinion, for Audi. Charging speeds haven't been great. I mean, the Porsche Taycan, right, 350 kilowatt charging, which is amazing. Charging speeds for Audi vehicles have just been not good enough for the price, but now that's changed. 270 kilowatt charging. So that's that's good charging speed. I think anyone would be pretty happy with that. When plugged into a sufficiently powerful plug, say Audi, uh, rated at 270 kilowatt or higher, the Q6 e-tron can recharge from 10 to 80% in 21 minutes. That's that's fast, 21 minutes. Assuming a total range of 300 miles, it'll be more than that, but assuming that's the number, um, that means you get 210 miles of driving from 20 minutes of charging. Yeah, I don't think anyone's gonna, gonna be complaining about that. Now, when you're using a charger that doesn't operate at 800 volts, the Q6 e-tron flips a switch that divides the pack into two 400 volt sections. So it basically, means the pack can charge in two segments, meaning it can charge much faster. It's a really, really smart strategy to do that, right? Those two segments then charge simultaneously at 135 kilowatt each, slashing charging times at less powerful stations. Under those circumstances, you can charge from 10 to 80% still in 30 minutes. So even slow chargers will give you a fast charge in the Q6 e-tron. Finally, you know, we, we're seeing luxury car brands offer you luxury features. And that, that, in my opinion, is really something you would want to consider. You know, you, you're going to pay more, you get more. But that said, uh, General Motors are doing that as well in the new Silverado EV. Now, Audi does plan on using Tesla's NAX charging standard for North American Q6 e-trons, not for e-trons that go to Europe or Australia or other countries. But for the North American version, it will have NAX. But unfortunately... At this point in time, they still only have the conventional combined charging system CCS port at launch. Audi isn't ready to announce when its cars will get next chargers, um, but I think um, that the, the sooner the better because Audi will want to get more customers. Customers will want to be, to be a part of this whole charging revolution considering now it's the North American charging standard. Now, we don't know what the prices are yet, but I would estimate considering the price of the Q4 e-tron is 55,000 for the cheapest version, and the Q8 e-tron is 74,000, probably in the middle of that, probably around $65,000 starting price. It's not cheap, but it's definitely a huge step up over previous Audi electric cars. Now, keep in mind, this, this vehicle has a new platform. It's called the PPE platform, and that, that probably enables some of these improvements, 800 volt, you know, having two segments charging at 400 volts simultaneously, if, if that's a necessary, if that's needed, um, having that bigger battery pack, that 100 kilowatt hour battery pack. And that's leading to what I think is actually a very compelling car. In the luxury segment, there's probably not a whole lot else that's better. In terms of the Q8 e-tron versus the Q6 e-tron, I think the Q6 is significantly better. And I also think this is a better car than Porsche Macan, which 
this will probably be cheaper as well. So would you get this or the Porsche Macan? In my opinion, pay less and get this instead. But there are a few other compelling electric cars out there as well that you might want to consider. Thanks for watching.